Hello friends, it's Craftus again, and today I'm going to show you how I made a Shrek figurine, but this is Warhammer 40,000. I'll start with the classic recipe, mix a skeleton pattern with aluminum wire. At this stage I didn't invent anything new and just wrapped the frame with aluminum foil and reinforced the top with wire, because I really don't like it when the foil doesn't fit tightly. Now I'm going to make a base layer of polymer clay, because it's more like skin than foil. I'll do the head a little later. And now I'll mark where the knee will be. Now it's easier for me to navigate where the other muscles will be located. Of course, I'm still new to this and don't follow the strict rules of anatomy. However, after looking at a couple pictures of the legs, I was able to make some pretty nice legs. Perfect. Shrek has a very prominent pot belly, and I add a thick layer of clay to make it the same. But at the same time, his ribcage should not be sunken in, it should be almost flush with his pot belly. Another feature of Shrek's figure is the hump on his back. I wonder how many people now remember their back and sit up straight. The biceps didn't turn out so well, and that's because I didn't mark where the elbow would be first. But I made a great forearm, for my level. And shoulders too. I did most of the work. The hardest part is the hand. I've tried several ways, but I'm going to show you the best one. I took a manicure stick and wrapped wire around it. Now I'm coating it with clay. And add a small piece of clay that will be the thumb. What's left is to remove the excess and add relief in some places. This method of molding reminds me of wood carving or loading textures in Cyberpunk. Be sure to add pre-baked nails for a realistic look. The hand is very easy to damage, so I baked it and now I can safely attach it to the arm. Not bad. This is the first face I've made. It's the fifth, the ninth, and this is the thirteenth. I'll stick with this one, and the rest will visit me in my nightmares. I'll show you how I did it. I started by making a neck and putting a chin on it. Then I did the cheekbones and cheek creases. Small recesses for the eyes. Nose like a potato. Bridge of the nose. And two balls on the sides. One of the most difficult elements proved to be the mouth. But even the mouth is easier to make than the eyes. In my opinion, an oval shape is better than a round shape because that's when the eyelids look the most natural. And his eyebrows are two flatbreads that I've attached tightly to his forehead. But the eyes are too big and look like an alien. So I made them smaller. That's much better. But I can't figure out who he reminds me of. <laughs> I made a small scar on his eyebrow, this will help me avoid some difficulty in the future, I'll tell you about it later on. And I'll finally get his ears done. He sure looks like Shrek now. <laughs> I made this incision to attach the head to the body. I have to be very careful not to crush Shrek's face. After I baked it, I noticed one mistake. I made the frame too short. Don't spare the wire, it's better to cut off the excess later than to do extra work. It's not always possible to lengthen the frame, but I've been lucky. Plus, I'll reinforce the weakest point with clay. As you've already realized, I don't like to make everything out of polymer clay alone. And all of his equipment will be made of other assorted materials. That's why I can already start coloring. I will be using the layering technique. Decreasing the paint area with each layer and increasing the brightness of each layer. It's a basic technique and it's pretty easy for beginners. This is my first time and I don't have any right to teach you now. So if you want to learn to paint minifigures, watch Duncan's videos. He's very clear and explains well. I learned it a lot from him. I will leave the link in the description. I made this car to avoid painting the other eye, because I thought I'd get them slanted. I wanted to just leave it white. But I believed in myself and I did it. 
Yes, they are a little different, but they still look really good. On the lips and scar I added a barely noticeable purple coat of paint. Such small details are actually very important to the perception. These are the only parts of the body that will be visible from under the clothes. I will be using three types of fabric. This fabric is similar to velvet, it's the simply thin cotton fabric, and a dark blue fabric, stretchy. Simply apply some PVA glue to the front side of the leg. When the glue dries, it will be very easy to glue the rest of the fabric on. And glue the rest of the pants on. It's the same with the shirt, but it's better to glue the sleeves on first. Then on a piece of fabric make the necessary marks and cut out the shirt. I made the front and back separate, it's just more convenient that way. So far he looks like the original Shrek, but I'm going to dress him up now. Warhammer orcs wear very massive heavy boots. I made them out of a piece of foam. To make the texture of the skin I heat the foam with a hair dryer and make indentations with a piece of foil. Then I paint it black and add a little grey to make the dance more visible. It looks very similar to real leather. Now after taking some measurements I have this boot pattern. I will be using this kind of glue, it melts the foam and polymer clay a bit. It's very strong, but be careful with it. I decided to make the sole out of polymer clay, because it will need to withstand some load. And I add a small strip to hide the seam between the sole and the boot. Carefully remove and send to bake. Whew. Paint and glue it in place. To hide the horrible stitching on the toe of the boots, I made this padding. I bought this gold chain for 50 cents. Sure, it looks really pretty, but if you hit it on fire, it gets just plain ugly. I've had this appliance lid in my locker for 10 years now. It's time to put it to good use. I'll cut diamond shaped plates out of it, that I'll paint and glue onto the boots. I'll use the same lid to make knee pads. I want to show you a way to make a classic orc pattern. I cut a square in a piece of clear plastic. And now using it as a stencil, I'm going to draw black squares. It turned out really well, and to bend the plate I made a small notch on the back side of the plate. One does not simply glue a knee pad right on the pants. So I wrapped what looked like a leather rope around the knee. It looks too new. That's better. To make the belt I took fabric and cut strips out of it, soaked them in acrylic paint and glued them on Shrek's waist. Then I cut two triangles out of a red piece of fabric, painted it with acrylic paint and set it on fire. Ow. That's fine. What's the sound? Oh, rings! I string four rings on each ring. I got a segment of five rings. I then attach another ring to the two rings and connect to another five ring segment. It's a chain of two segments and this one has 11 segments. I will need 10 such chains with the number of segments ranging from 1 to 11. And I need to bring it all together. It's a very complicated and confusing process. I clamp the connecting ring in the vise and then thread two rings from the chain onto it. And I clamp the ring. I'd rather show it on a diagram. The green ring is a connecting ring. To it I need to join the red rings from the chain. This way I have to connect all the rings. I spend the whole day on it. I ended up with this. Israel. It really does look like it. It's metallic but malleable like fabric. 
To get rid of the shine, I painted the chainmail first black and then a little brown to make it look rusty. Excess paint was removed with sandpaper, putting the chainmail in its place. I am sure your memory of how I made the knee pads is still vivid in your mind. So that's the same way I made these armor plates on the thighs. Shrek is an agar and I need a bolt and a nut to make skulls. The nut is needed to weight the skull, because polymer clay is very light, and the bolt is easy to hold. First you'll need to make a ball from a piece of clay. Squeeze it a little on the sides to make it narrower on top. Cut off the front and squeeze a little at the bottom to mark the jaw. And bake it right away. Then I add a layer of clay and shape it into a face. I'm using the ball stylus to make the eye sockets. Cheekbones and hollows in the temple area. Teeth. First make a relief of the gums, then use a sharp instrument to make the teeth. And of course the nose. You can add a little more relief to your taste. I then painted it white and added a very liquid, almost transparent orange paint. It's done. Take a red silk thread and wrap it around the skull. Let's just get the belt done. Just wrap the rest of the cord and glue on some kind of buckle. I decided not to mess with it too much. The bottom part of the garment is done, let's do the rest of it. From a piece of aluminum I found in the garage I make a cuirass. Aluminum, although a soft metal, still requires effort in processing, but you can replace it with EVA foam, it will make the job a lot easier. It's so dirty, I might not even paint it. But I cleaned it up anyway and painted it red. It's better this way, it looks more contrasty. I also made a jaw like this, it will cover the lower part of the face. I try it on the head to make sure it fits, and then I paint it. Red, of course, because the red ones go faster. I will be bolting it on, it requires a hole to be made in the jaw and in Shrek's own head. I'll screw a bolt like this into the hole, but without the head. I put glue in the hole to make it secure, that way it feels safer. I can't look at his slanted eyes, he looks ridiculous. So I read it and varnish the eyes to make them shine. That's much better. I got this height of a teddy bear. To avoid damaging the fur, I cut it from the inside. Here is such a cloak. Painted black, of course. The paint needs to be diluted with water, or the hairs will stick together. I'll paint the inside side especially thoroughly with undiluted paint. While the cloak is drying, I am going to wrap a couple of belts around it to make it pretty. I love the different small things. The cloak has dried and looks like this. Great! Now I'll make pauldrons out of these two plates. It's the same as with the cures, bend, paint it and scratch it up. It looks too flat, so I pick it up this old wristwatch. A watch strap comes in handy. I paint this red, degreasing it beforehand. And I just glue it right onto the pauldron. I also have some of those cone-shaped rhinestones. It is convenient to use double-sided tape for painting small parts. That's it, time to arm this guy. And I made these blades for this because I want Shrek's right hand to hold something like a huge mechanical jaw that will bite his enemies. I'll just sew off the axis. Putting it on the arm, this will be held in a wooden stick and a drop of glue. The top of this jaw I will make in the shape of a dragon's head. To make it easier, I make a base like this and bake it right away. I use a large piece of clay to form the front of the skull and use a thumb to make the eye socket. Put another piece of clay on top, which will become the skull box and you have an almost finished skull. 
All you have to do is make the eye socket more spherical inside. Make spikes and teeth out of thin sausage and twisted horns out of thick sausage. Make release and nostrils stick teeth in their place and place the rest of the spikes or any parts of the school you like. Then I paint it white, give a touch of voltage with orange paint and glue it on. That's great, but there is another arm. Let's make an axe for it. I sewed an axe like this out of metal and even sharpened it. I'm gonna make a handle out of this branch. It just needs a little bit of planing. After I made this hole, I stuck this in the oven for 15 minutes. Turned out this nice color. The stick is too thick, so I broke it in half, but no one will know about it. Wonderful! I'm gonna make a concrete stand this time. For this purpose, I mix cement and sand in the proportion of 1 to 3. The blend should be very thick to hold its shape. After I have shaped the stone, I wait about 40 minutes for the concrete to begin to harden because then it gets hard enough to make small cracks in it. The main thing is not to miss the moment, a little more time and concrete will finally harden. To paint it, I diluted black paint with water and soaked the stone in it. And with a dry brush I added a touch of yellow and red. It's done. I think you enjoyed this video, so don't forget to join our ranks, there's more to come and check out the video about Korok, it's very funny. Thanks for watching buddy, and bye!